much. I uh, was not uh, prepared to give remarks, so uh, I will keep them short. But it's a great honor to, to be here and on behalf of our member companies, which are some of the largest companies doing business in Indonesia. Um, I want to thank me for uh, inviting us here today and a number of our members uh, were introduced to you earlier. Uh, we are at the U.S. Office <laughs> Council. We support the entrepreneurial spirit of HIPME, and uh, we hope to uh, work together uh, on a number of issues. I think that there are a number of issues where uh, international companies and Indonesian companies can agree. Things like the rule, support of the rule of law, transparency, uh, and we hope to uh, work with you. We had a good uh, initial meeting when I was in Jakarta just a few weeks ago, uh, before President Obama's visit. Um, we were met with the deal, and we were uh, pleased to be able on short notice to arrange uh, your visit to Google, one of our members. Um, and we hope uh, to, and this is the first step in a strong relationship between uh, HIPME and the U.S. ASEAN Business Council. So thank you for being here. We wish you well. We hope you'll come back again. And uh, we hope uh, next time that we have a little bit more notice and we'd like to get you to see some of, all, some of our companies, uh, which are big companies, but uh, they all started small. I think Google started as, as two people in a uh, trailer at Stanford. So uh, as you saw, it's, it's grown into something quite a lot bigger. And uh, I think together, uh, Indonesian companies and American companies uh, can uh, do a lot for both of our countries and, uh, and for the world at large. So we look forward to working with you, and uh, thank you again for uh, having us here today, and see you in Jakarta. Ladies and gentlemen, now our next speaker is that we have been waiting for, Mr. Ambassador Dino Manijana. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, my very good friend, the charismatic leader of Hitme, Erwin Aksa. It's always good to see you. Uh, and all our friends uh, in Hitme, uh, Rizwan, uh, Adil, Selmi, and everybody else, uh, welcome to Washington, D.C. And I also want to acknowledge our American friends, my good friend Alex uh, Feldman, uh, Evan, Russell King, Susan, Daisy, Kate, everybody. Welcome. Uh, Erwin, you said in 1993 you stood out there and you dreamt of coming to this <laughs> embassy and speaking here. Yeah, I noticed when we were having dinner, his eyes were just dreaming. I think he was dreaming, my next step would be when do I sit in the ambassador's office? <laughs> I would like to make an offer. You know, what do we trade? Uh, next year when you step down, I'll become city chairman and you become ambassador. St. Louis, Mississippi, and uh, at Missouri, Missouri. And I was uh, asked uh, when I gave a speech uh, by uh, some student, yeah, how would you describe young Indonesia? And I gave an answer, and that answer is exactly what hit me is all about. This is for the benefit of my American friends. What is young Indonesia is all about? And this is what hit me is all about. It is young, it is creative, it is energetic, it is funky, groovy, and hip. <laughs> so, look, I, I want to begin by just saying, putting our meeting in context. Uh, we are meeting in a time when Indonesia's relations with America has opened a new era. Since the visit of President Barack Obama to Indonesia, it wasn't just a bilateral visit, it was a very historic visit. We have opened, inaugurally, officially, a new chapter in Indonesia-US relationship, a 21st century relationship, what we call a comprehensive partnership. You know, that visit was very historic because, you know, that speech that he gave in the University of Indonesia, the first time ever, you think about this, the first time ever, any head of state of any country in our history spoke live to the whole people of Indonesia, live, and been to all the world about Indonesia. You think about it. You know, when he's, yeah. In, in, 
in uh, Egypt, he spoke about Islam. You know, he wasn't about, about Egypt or the Middle East. He spoke about Islam. In Turkey, he spoke about Europe, he spoke about civilization, and also Islam. But on that day, on the 10th of November, he spoke for 40 minutes about Indonesia and only about Indonesia. Amazing. I think one, one uh, reporter said it right that in that short time, he charmed the whole nation and he changed the feeling of grassroots Indonesians towards America. Now, this is important for all of us because government to government level is great, right? But at the people to people level, at the grassroots level, this is where we need to do a lot of gardening, you know, because political and diplomatic relations cannot proceed unless you have the psychological connections between the grassroots of the two countries. And that's why the visit of President Barack Obama was a very historic, not just any other valid visit, but it was a historic visit uh, by any standard. One problem with the contractual partnership. We have a great concept, great energy, great commitment, great political will, but this is a thin relationship, you know, the peace, you know. Finance sector, you know, uh, defense, uh, diplomacy, governance, democracy, education, technology, health, and so on. But it's still a thin relationship. What I mean by it is that uh, the number of Indonesian students in, in America is only 7,000, down from 14,000. Right? And I see everywhere I go, it's mostly Chinese and Indian students, the dominant portion of the students. And Indonesia is just the 5% or 2% of the students. Right? Uh, the business relationship is also something that needs to be enhanced. You know, Indonesia's trade with China is $30 billion. And consider, consider the fact that we just reopened diplomatic relations with China only in the 90s, you know, and they reached $30 billion already. With America, it's $20 billion, right? $10 billion behind, right? There's much to be done between our countries. And this is why this visit is very important to the work of enhancing U.S. Uh, Indonesia relations. I just have one message each for our American friends and one message for our Hitmi friends. To our American friends, I want to say this. When you look at Asia, don't think of Asia as being China and Japan. Because the tendency these days is just Asia is just China or India or Japan. China, Asia is also Indonesia. Indonesia is the largest country in Southeast Asia, the largest economy in Southeast Asia. Uh, it's the third highest growth among the G20 countries. Uh, we uh, have a strong democracy, uh, and it's a democracy that can combine with economic development, uh, and we have strong dynamic population and strong interpreters such as for this teacher. It's important also for American friends to understand that Indonesia is on the verge of a unique transformation. We have what is called the Quiet Revolution, which means there is a decentralized process whereby all leaders in Indonesia now are directly elected at the local level. You know, all the governors, all the mayors, and so on, they're all directly elected at the local level. So that's political decentralization, and there's also fiscal decentralization. What this means is that in the next 10, 20 years or so, you will see the source of growth coming from the regions, the provinces, you know. Uh, so it's not just political decentralization. You'll see a decentralized economic growth. You know, growth centers springing from many areas, from Papua, from Aceh, from Medan, from Lampung, from Makassar, from all the other places. Right? So uh, that's what you need to catch on. And this is why you need to get engaged with all these young people coming from all the provinces, because they will be the motor of Indonesia's growth regionally and coming from all the provinces. And the third message comes back to, uh, to my American friends. What you see here, they hit me people, and I know them because I go to all their parties in Jakarta with my wife, of course. <laughs> that, that, that the hippie people are the new kind of entrepreneurs in Indonesia. You know, they're, they're young, they're energetic, but they're also idealistic and competitive. They see the world not as a threat, they see the world as an opportunity, as an oyster. They want to engage the world. They're not afraid of globalization. They want to compete. They want to learn. They want to adapt. And they think outside the box. So it's a new breed of Indonesian entrepreneurs. I'm so proud to have them here and to know them. And I'm so proud that uh, 
Erwin Pasar is leading them to become a different kind of young Indonesian entrepreneur. So my advice to my American friends is get to know them, connect with them, and make sure you uh, make a constructive, mutually beneficial business arrangement with them. Now, my message to my uh, Philippine friends from Indonesia. Uh, I've been here two months, and I've been to New York, uh, San Francisco, LA, Silicon Valley, and all these places. And you know what? People talk about China and India, right? And you know some uh, great innovative uh, centers and all that great prospects. It's all true, but you know I haven't seen anything that would make me think that America is no longer the source of global innovation. The resources, the intellectual resources in Silicon Valley, in Microsoft, in uh, MIT, in all these places that I've seen is unmatched. And it will continue for the short and medium term. Right? That's why Indonesian students must return to America. Indonesian businesses must engage with America. Indonesia's excellent centers, research and development centers, must engage with centers of excellence and innovation in America. Because this country is still the best, you know, when it comes to these things, right? So you have to realize that India, China, all these things, great, right? but America is still the game in town. And we must not be uh, 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 distracted uh, by that. The second point, and this is very important for us to know, you know, there's a lot of projections about where Indonesia will be, right? Uh, there's this thing called uh, the E7. You know, E7 is the prediction that by 2030, the E7 countries will overtake the G7 countries by 2030. E7 is Brazil, Russia, India, China, Mexico, Indonesia, Turkey, right? There's another projection by HSBC. Uh, they said that GBETS will be the next uh, growing emerging markets to watch in the next 10 years. Colombia, Indonesia, Vietnam, Egypt, Turkey, South Africa, right? There's something called the BRICI, you know, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and they say E comes from uh, Indonesia. There's something called the N11, the next 11. Now these are countries like Egypt, Vietnam, Turkey, Bangladesh, India, blah, 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 and Indonesia, right? I can go on, 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 and on, but what is interesting, you see all these projections, Indonesia is part of every single one of them, right? Even today, in the last few days, a foreign policy magazine just came up, uh, saying that Indonesia is one great story, and that it will be, uh, they call it the Asian giant, the Indonesian tiger, uh, and the democratic superpower of the 21st century. We have all these positive projections. Give them some get happen. But my advice, jangan get happen. You know why? They're talking about where we could be, not where we are, right? There's a gap between where we are now and what people say where we could be, yeah? Our job, my job, your job, is to ensure where we are now leads to all these great projections of where Indonesia will be in the 20th century, becoming the world's top 10 Economy, right? That's our job. Because no transformation, we talk about China, we talk about India, we talk about South Africa, we talk about Brazil, we talk about China, Mexico, Chile, you know, all these great transforming economies, when they grow and they transform and when they excel, they need a you know critical mass, you know, a group of economic and political elite who drive the momentum and speed up the momentum of change. That's you. That's you. Right? And what is important for you to know. And I'm so convinced about this. With all these projections about where Indonesia will be, the E7, the Chivas, the Brigi, the top 10 economies of the world, America will be part of our economic success. Take it from me, sir. Take it from me. Right? If we can connect with the innovation centers in Silicon Valley, we've been there, in MIT, right? in, in the Microsoft, in New York, everywhere. We connect with that both economically commercially and technologically, we will gain faster momentum to reach from where we are to where we could be. So your trip here has that strategic meaning for Indonesia and for our future. Thank you very much.